Hi, and welcome to the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm Chris Torrance. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the Frieden calculator that we looked at a few episodes ago. So let's get started. So if you recall from my interview with Harry Edwards, who worked on the calculators back in the 1960s, the calculator that was donated to the Media Archaeology Lab had a few problems. It wasn't able to compute divisions properly, and some of the number counters didn't seem to work. So Harry was kind enough to actually take the calculator back, and what he found out was one of the gears inside was stripped. We actually found the part in the service manual, but as you might expect, those gears were nowhere to be found on the internet without having to buy, say, a whole new calculator on eBay. So instead, we thought we'd try to do a 3D printed gear. So let's see how it goes. I'm going to go ahead and use Inkscape to create the gear. So I'm going to go under Extensions, Render, Gear, and then I'm going to just choose the correct characteristics. So I have 36 teeth. Oh, and we can actually turn on live preview when we're doing this. The circular pitch, which is the distance between the center of the teeth, is 3.3, and that's what I computed earlier. And the diameter of the center hole is four millimeters. And now I can go ahead and I can save that. Now we're gonna go ahead and import our SVG file into Autodesk 123D Design. And we'll do import, and we wanna import SVG as a 2D sketch. So we'll pick that, and then we need to choose the source for it. When We don't want to pick Inkscape because it assumes that it's in pixels, so instead we'll pick Other App, and we'll say that the units are millimeters. And then when we do that, here comes our gear. Now it's going to be a little slow because this is just a mesh of points. So the first thing we want to do is actually just extrude this into a solid, and we'll do that by clicking the Extrude button here, and the thickness of our gear is 3.75 millimeters. And then we need to delete our SVG because that'll just make things a lot faster. So now that that's deleted, here's our gear. And now we can go ahead and add the little knob on top of the gear. All right, so Harry, what are we, uh, what are we, what are we <laughs> looking at? <laughs> yep, what are we, what are we doing here? Well, we're going to see if we can replace this old broken, rotten, no good gear. And gee, I'm going to complain it's not red, the new one they made. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. I can always paint it. You know? Yep, yep. <laughs> no, that looks. This one looks like the one that should be used, and we'll see how it goes down in there. Okay. So speaking of going in, let's put these off to the side. Yep. And we're gonna get turned around here. Where am I? What am I doing? Okay, here we go. So it's upside it's, down right now. Right? It's this upside is the bottom. down. Yep. Yep. All right. And what are we looking at here now? What is Those this? Those are actuators. See, that's what uh, does the counting of the when you pull the keys down, which we can't very well do here, but um, we can turn it the other way. These are the actuators. That's what does the counting. Yep. When you when you select a number on the keyboard, then this is the teeth that count the number of turns that it should make. Now you have to understand where that goes down in there. I think and I can, you can see it. I can see right. It must yep. mesh with that one there. Right? Well, see, there's a gear on each side of that. So. So where is the other? The other gear is right here. Oh, there it is. Because this is the motor. See, that's the motor that turns it. The motor hooks to this. Oh, sure enough. See? So the motor's out right now, right? Oh, yeah. It's over okay. there. Yep. 
So there's a metal gear on top and the metal, and then this old big guy down here. Yep, see? yep. So that's, this new gear has got to go right in here. At the top one, is it turning? The motor one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, All right, so here we are. We're screwing in the, the screws to hold the bottom on. And, Tell them there are 17 of these we're doing. Yeah, and each one has this little kind of lock nut underneath yeah. that fits into a little groove. And if you're not careful, when you unscrew the screw, then they fall out into it. That's so, right. Well, right. the idea with them being have the notch in there, you have to explain the fact that that holds the vertical plates that's in the machine in alignment yeah. with the bottom case. Okay. My old tools are so worn out that... <laughs> well, I've been... I restored cars for 20 years. I wore out all my tools. So how many guys were there who were typically working on these, like, back at the... Back of the shop, I mean, is it just a couple? Well, usually there's three uh, three guys that basically stayed in the shop. Mm -hmm. Shop manager and three workers, you know, so to speak. And it depended upon what they had to do and how much stuff we brought in for them to work on. <laughs> but they were, they were primarily, I mean, they were mostly like fixing stuff, right? They weren't like assembling these at all? Like it That's was, right. No, they were they... fixing major problems. Okay. Because they, they came already like problems assembled. Problems that we and... couldn't get at out in the field. Yep. Yeah. What do we got going here? Okay, we're going to put the motor back in it. And we have this little protector card that goes in under here to help take away some of the vibration and the noises, we hope. <laughs> and so, Put that in and I was explaining the fact we want to know what the hole in the cardboard was for. It's not a cardboard, it's a fiber board. And we place that in there and when we put the motor in, there is a big hole in the bottom of the motor. And that is so that you could get at these points. These points control the speed of the motor. Uh. So you could turn it upside down and adjust that without taking the motor out. Yep. That was the whole point of that story. Okay, let's see if the gears are turning. That'll be the next thing. Well, let's just put some one in there and see. Can you see them turning? Yep. Our gear is turning our gear. Yep. <laughs> and it doesn't have that screaming noise. No, it's nice and quiet. Wait till I grease that sucker. She'll be clear quiet. Well, my friend. Great. That's in. great. As you could tell, the 3D printed gear worked great. The next steps are to reassemble the calculator and make sure that everything else is working. But I'll save that for a future episode. I'd like to thank Harry Edwards for agreeing to work on the calculator again, and also to my friend Klaus for printing the gear on his 3D printer. So until next time, thanks for watching. We got pieces left over, but we know where most of them go, so not to worry.